All right. So before we finish our program today, let's look into our crystal ball and see some of the news that will be making headlines in the course of this week. And for that, I'm joined by our digital editor, David Ohito, who joins us from our talk studio tonight. Uh, David, uh, good evening. It's good to have you with us. Let's start by talking about um, President Yoweri Museveni's visit here tomorrow. Uh, he's here to talk about the pipeline, but many say he should be talking about something entirely different. Do you think that will make it to the agenda tonight? <laughs> Thank you very much, Yvonne, uh, for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here every Sunday evening. Uh, I think the visit is very symbolic. Uh, Uganda needs to have its oil uh, pumped through Kenya uh, into their land. And that's a very critical decision they have made. We have to do infrastructure for them. But it comes at a time that there is a boiling point, and that is Migingo Island for us. Uh, I think Migingo Island and the territorial integrity of Kenya comes first, not the pipeline. Really? Not the pipeline? I mean, many would think that that would be something that would be beneficial to both countries and especially uh, in the EAC. Oh, yes, it's really beneficial. It's uh, infrastructure. Kenya is going to gain from it, and so Uganda will do the same. But uh, if you look at the Close to Kenyan roads that the tankers uh, run and uh, carry or transit fuel to Ugandan uh, uh, borders. I, I think the cost is too much on our roads, and we have suffered for a very long time because we don't have the very best of the roads. And uh, if we can pump to them fuel via the pipeline infrastructure, that for me is a world-class world best practice that we should really embrace. But see, it comes at a time that the Kenyans have been asking a very critical question. Yes, we are good neighbors. Yes, we are doing business together. Yes, you are transiting your goods through our country. But what about Migingo? You own no piece of land in Migingo. Can you declare that when you are here tomorrow? All right. So do you think then Migingo will make it to the agenda there? Do you, do you think that's, that's, that's going to be discussed at all? Because Uganda has been pretty silent over the issue with the IBC officials who are briefly detained. Not just that. I, I've been working in that part of the country and it was only, not only the IABC officials who were detained, a number of Kenyan uh, fisher folk have been suffering at the hands of uh, Ugandan security forces, including Kenya's own security officers. But there has been a hush about it. I think the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has been trying to keep this bubble too low, but it burst at the weekend when Raheel Odinga said, we will defend our people and if need be we're gonna mobilize our people to go and storm the island and take it over if kenyan authorities can do it and i think for diplomatic relations Museveni cannot avoid that talk okay all right so we'll wait to see whether that indeed makes it onto the table for discussion let's move over to something else that we had talked about last uh, sunday with you david and this is about um, the appointments that we're seeing of course many people um their tenure on the boards is coming to an end and we're seeing some appointments we saw some people make a comeback to the public service can you look into your crystal ball tonight david and tell us who else we might see um, coming back? We've seen Kimemia, we've seen Henry Koske. Do you think there are other names out there of people we know who might make a comeback to public service? One of the most baffling appointments of the digital government. I think if you are anywhere between 75 and 80, I think you should raise your balls and carry your uh, CV to the, uh, wave it very high so that it's seen. Uh, people didn't expect this because I think people should honestly believe in young people if the future of this country has to go anywhere better. We are living in an information era, uh, but we are seeing the analog people being given the digital jobs, how they will perform, I don't know. I don't know what to rubbish the good experience they bring on board, the experiences they had when they served, the good diplomats they were, the rulers of this world, Henry Cosgays of this world. But I think there's a chance for the youth of this country. They have better papers, they have better world experience and better exposition. I think they deserve a chance. And if you ask me, um, they should be given a chance. I don't see the value Franklin Bates, Henry Cos Gaze, Mudawura will add when you have people who are trained in Harvard, best university, Ivy League universities all over the world with the best brains. 
yearning with energy to serve this country, I think give you the chance. All right, so you're talking about uh, persons who are a lot older, perhaps preparing and dusting off their CVs. Do you think we will see a lot more people, you know, a lot more of the seniors, um, people who've been there making a comeback? Do you think we will see more appointments this week? Uh, and perhaps more women, because there's also been the, the challenge of having uh, more women appointed. And the president's cabinet isn't, uh, you know, constitutionally constituted. But that's another matter for another day. But do you think we will see more women and more um, older people as opposed to younger ones as we carry on with these appointments? There are more senior women who are also in retirement with better brains than the men who are appointed. <laughs> I haven't seen them. So begs the question, why not inclusivity? And inclusivity means going beyond just two communities, making it look national. Kenya has 42 communities. If you have for every two positions, I think juggle them up and give more people appointments. Uh, I do not want to demean the appointments made by the president and his deputy, but why not women? We have better women with better brains, with better papers than those of the, some of those people we saw appointed. Is it not the time to look at our older women if you can look at the younger ones like okay. Ivan Okwara? All right, interesting one. Uh, just finally, if you can, in about 30 seconds, we're still keeping our eye on the Tunoi Tribunal. Yes, we are waiting to see if they will have the first sittings and uh, start getting to know whether we will have a properly constituted uh, Supreme Court come 2017 because that potents or, you know, boils up what could be a serious constitutional crisis ahead of the election. And we don't want to get to the election without a properly constituted Supreme Court in place. Okay, all right, thanks very much. David Ohito, who's our digital editor, joining us tonight, taking a look at the crystal ball, the stories we hope to see, we will be keeping our eye on in the next week. David Ohito, always a pleasure having you here with us on Checkpoint.